Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about applications of radical halogenation in synthesis. And so I really want to just con uh, consider a very generic case where we have cyclopentane and we want to convert cyclopentane into some molecule that has a leaving group. And maybe we want that, you know, because down the line we want to do another substitution. So, you know, maybe what we're really interested in is, is doing some sort of substitution. Um, but it won't let me draw that the way I want it to. You know, maybe. I apologize. Here we go. Uh, some kind of substitution. Maybe what we're interested in is doing like uh, putting a, a cyanide group or nitrile functional group there. And that's going to require a leaving group. And we're going to do an SN2 reaction. But we don't actually care what this leaving group is as long as it's a good leaving group. And well, the halogens are good leaving groups. Okay. Um, the other thing that's important to know that as far as uh, as you know, as far as alkenes go, there really aren't a lot of reactions they can do. They can be burnt to make carbon dioxide and water, or they can undergo radical halogenation. On a text box. Here we go. So it's just to sum that up, radical halogenation is one of the few so synthetically useful reactions of alkanes. Remember, alkanes have no other functional, you know, alkanes as a class of molecule have no other functional groups, and you kind of need those other functional groups for things to happen. Right. Um, and since this video is part of a series on radical halogenation, we've actually talked about in previous videos <coughs> radical chlorination and radical bromination and why we don't use fluorine and iodine. Um, and so in this particular case, and then the other ones I'm gonna cover in this video, the real question is, which halogen do you wanna use, bromine or chlorine? Um, and for simple symmetric molecules, if you control the conditions to just give one halogenation, uh, and you don't care which halogen you have, sometimes you might actually like want chlorine, or you might want bromine in a particular position for some reason or another, um, both bromine and chlorine are going to be okay for this particular reaction uh, because they're going to generate the same kind of major product with a leaving group in the same plot. All five positions, all 10 hydrogens on, on cyclopentane are equivalent. Uh, so you get the same major product with the exception of the identity of the halogen. You know, so if we're using simple and symmetric molecules, you know, and then we can use both. Oh, and I want to make these look like chemical formulas, of course. Both bromine and chlorine are okay. Now, um, let's pick cyclo... Um, Let's put a methyl group here, and uh, let's say we want to do some kind of conversion. And again, uh, we just need a leaving group, and we need it in the right place. Uh, but we want it here. <clears throat> here. So now which halogen do we want to use? Well... Again, let's compare bromine versus chlorine. Chlorine. And we'll do bromine. In TL2 uh, UV radiation, bromine and UV irradiation. So, which one is going to be better? Now there might actually be a difference. Right? We know from the video on selectivity that this is going to be the major product 
of radical bromination. And it's going to be the major product, like 90 plus percent of the, of the product mixture. And we know that chlorine is less selective. So while chlorine is less selective, the this product is going to form It's going to be one of a mixture, uh, but you know, honestly, it might not even be the m largest amount uh, of the mixture. There are a lot, there's all of these secondary positions and primary positions. There's just, you're going to get a mixture and it's not necessarily going to be pretty... So um, in this particular case, we're going to want to use bromine because bromine is selective for the more substituted position. Lost my, my arrow there. All right. What if uh, instead we wanted the leaving group somewhere else? Like maybe we wanted the leaving group out here on uh, the methyl. All right. And we wanted to do this in one step. Later on, we're going to talk about synthesis. And there might actually be a two or three step sequence that could do this better and then higher overall yield. But if we wanted to do this in one step, now we might be better off choosing chlorine. Because while this won't while this product won't be the major product, say, uh, yeah. it is going to be a measurable component of the mixture. And so as long as you are okay separating out possible isomers, chlorination is fine to, to produce a less substituted product. If you are intent on generating the less substituted product and you don't care about the separation, then chlorine is the way to go. In the next video, we're going to talk about allyl bromination, which is a special kind of radical halogenation reaction for the allyl position and also the benzyl position. Thank you for watching.